Hello, I'm Gordon Linsner, and this is the opening to my short story, Moshigawa's Homecoming. Moshigawa Iwa paused before the low rubble where the sloping outer wall of his clan's castle had stood. The long climb had tired him. Despite the chilling sea breeze, perspiration crawled under his leather breastplate and the loose folds of the hunting jacket his class usually wore in times of peace. The latter was his only attempt at disguise. Ito was bareheaded. His elaborate helmet hung behind by its chin strap. Bow and arrows he'd left with his tohuku bred mare in a thicket at the cliff's base. Although the animal had been raised among mountains, this path was too narrow and twisting for her hooves. The regular roads, of course, were barred to him by Hairo patrols. And besides, the crosswinds on a seacoast clifftop made bow shots uncertain. He had his daggers thrust in his belt, two fine swords, the long taichi and the shorter katana. A warrior of his skill needed little more. And Ito anticipated no danger within the ruins. Ito glanced back the way he'd come. Much of his path was hidden by boulders, stubborn brush, thicker cover near the bottom. To the right, far below, was an open field once lushly green, now brown with upturned mud, where he and other children of the clan sometimes held ferocious battles with self-made wooden swords and mercilessly teased any dogs foolish enough to intrude. On special occasions, competitions were held there. That earth had been shaken by sumo bouts, horse races, games such as the Sakalai Kamari, as the clansfolk vied among themselves or with guests from nearby provinces. On one of these competition days, Ito decided there could be no lasting peace with the Hairo clan from the south. Ito's likable but slow-witted cousin, Kiken, was particularly fond of Taco, wherein kite tails fitted with sharp blades were manipulated to cut the cords of opponents' kites. And that year, a sudden downdraft brought a kite down near young Kaiken. Without a thought, he grasped at it, lost his right forefinger to the second joint. He recalled his own cry of horror, saw again Kaiken's parents rushing to his side as the child tried through watering eyes, tying his finger back in place with cloth torn from his kimono. Above the cries of concern and distress came the brain laughter of Hairo Muka heir to Lord Hayero. Ido was tempted to challenge Muka at that instant, despite the Hayero's advantage in age and weight. But Lord Moshigawa would punish any breaking of their truce with exile. Unfortunately, their paths did not cross afterwards, and now all but Ido were dead. No Mishigawa infant would ever chase flies across that green again. Thank you.